Hey guys, what's going on? This really echo in here, is it? Hello. Hello guys, it's Otto. This is different, isn't it? That's right, this is a new studio space. We have moved to a different Monik Productions headquarters. And I hope that the audio isn't so echoey that it's unusable, but if it is, too bad. So we've just moved and right before the move, I actually sprained my ankle so badly that after a whole month, it's still not functional. So that is a bummer, but everything went smoothly and we have moved successfully. As you can hear, this place is very echoey and I need some new acoustic treatment in here. So I've decided to partner up with Vicoustic to get some acoustics going on. What's really cool about this place is that it's fully dedicated for studio use. There's the studio space and there's also a separate walk-in closet where all the gear is stored. Very nice. But there's a lot of work to do. There's this blue wallpaper that needs to be removed. The room will be painted and the acoustic will actually look at the room and see what kind of acoustic treatment this space needs. They make a plan and they actually have people who will come here to set up this acoustic madness. So the point of this video is to show you how this regular room is turned into a music studio. And I'll also show you a before and after of what the room sounds like without acoustic treatment and with acoustic treatment. So let's go. Time to have an adventure. It's weird. All right, guys, what's going on? I gotta keep my voice down and my face close to the microphone so the echo won't overwhelm us. So as you can see, everything looks kind of really different here. There's no more blue wallpaper. There's just stuff everywhere, plastic. It's a mess, but everything's going forward. That's great. And we started this whole thing by removing the wallpaper. We scraped off all the wallpaper. We thought it was gonna be really easy, but it wasn't because underneath the sort of initial layer of wallpaper, there was another layer, an old flowery wallpaper uh, that we had to also remove, which made the whole process pretty difficult. I think it took us an entirety of 15 hours to get rid of all of this wallpaper. So as we were scraping off the wallpaper, we were really uncertain of what kind of a wall was gonna meet and greet us. So as we scraped away at the wallpaper, a brown surface sprung up. And this is what's called a chipboard wall. So as you can see, this is all chipboard. The way this kind of chipboard wall works is that there are these kinds of sheets of wall where there's a intentional gap that's left in between each sheet of chipboard. So there's an intentional reason why chipboard walls have these gaps. And that's because chipboard is kind of a living, breathing, moving material that kind of shrinks and expands throughout the seasons. So as we got rid of more and more wallpaper, more and more gaps started showing up. So we were wondering, man, it'd be really nice if we could just have flat walls with no gaps. I browsed the internet and I found that there's many different approaches to this issue. Lots of them are pretty risky though, because if you were to take putty and cover up those gaps, they could crack as the season cools because the walls will kind of shrink and the gaps get bigger. So then we'll have cracks on the walls. That would suck. One of the better solutions would have been either to install drywall on top of the chipboard walls or to remove the chipboard walls entirely and install drywall or something else. But this kind of a process was something that we were uncertain if we could even do it ourselves and hiring a person to do it was going to be pretty expensive. So we ended up going with the following process. So after doing a bunch of research, I ended up asking one of my friends who works in the construction industry on what could be the best solution here. This person and other people on the internet suggested doing so that you get very thick putty to cover up the gaps first. Then you get a finer putty, slap that on, and then you get this thing called seam tape. And you put that on top of the finer putty and then put on one last 
layer of fine putty, wait for that to dry, and then you take one more slab of that thick putty, put it on top, wait for it to dry, and after that you have to sand everything so you won't have any kinds of uh, bumps and stuff like this. Things worked out fine. It was a bit of a struggle and I actually ended up running out of the thickest putty, which we actually didn't have any of this specific putty around our area. So we had to drive a whole hour to get the specific putty come back. So we weren't going to do that drive again. The most important thing was just to seal up the seam tape so you can't see it anymore. And I hope that's good enough. After this whole process, I kind of sanded everything down and I actually did my final sanding today. And I think it's looking pretty good. I think the next stop is to paint. So we'll be painting the walls with an ash gray kind of color, kind of like in our previous studio space. And that'll probably look really cool. It's on brand, I guess. And uh, that's what's next. Wish me luck. Hey guys, let's go to ASMR mode again. As you can see, every wall has been painted. It's all ash gray, as I mentioned. I did two coats of paint and I think the paint job is fine. I did a few mistakes here and there. I kind of painted over parts that I shouldn't have painted on. And I think the biggest problem in this whole project thus far has been the mudding. So putting on the putty. That is a very difficult thing to do. There's been other mudding projects in our new place and I've been kind of learning as I go and I've discovered new tools that I may have needed like this one or maybe I could have used paper seam tape instead of this widest toilet paper roll in the world. So if you stick your face into the parts of the walls that have been mudded you can see a little bit of bumps and lumps and sometimes you can see the seam tape kind of pop out a bit. It's a little bit nasty, but you know what? It was my first time and also the acoustic panels are gonna cover up lots of these spots, so it's cool. Other things have happened besides the painting. There's also a carpet now. We have curtains. I installed a little lamp. It's kind of cool, it's dimmable. But the next part is really exciting because we're gonna jump into the acoustics realm. I've received the plans to what the studio will look like from Vicoustic. It's, it's mind blowing, look at these pictures. It's so cool. So after contacting the dealer, I got most of the acoustics moving towards my direction. The rest of them will come a little bit later, but the most essential pieces are gonna be here. Wait a minute. They're not gonna be here. They are here. That's right, they're here. They arrived yesterday. I decided to install the acoustics myself, so I'll be doing that starting today. That's the next step, and I hope I won't mess this up. But we'll see what happens. Here we go. All right, hear that? Echo's gone. No need for ASMR anymore. I'm sorry about that. Finally, the most essential acoustics have been set up. Why is this such good news? Well, I get to work again. I get to do vocals for people. I get to do videos again. This is good news. So uh, setting up was not a big deal. All that you do is you take the acoustics uh, flexi glue and you put that in the back of a panel. You make a little square shape and then you make an X and then you place the panel where you want it to be placed. And uh, I personally had a little bit of trouble with the glue. I would not get the glue to come out sometimes. I think I could have maybe cut the nozzle a little bit or something. I'm happy that the measurements went okay. Nothing's really lopsided. Everything looks fine. The remaining acoustics won't be here in quite a bit, but that's fine because again, the most essential ones are here and I can get to making music again, which is such a relief. It's been such a long time. The ankle was busted. By the way, everything's okay with the ankle now. It was like two to three months of just it not doing its job. I can finally walk, I can jump up and down, I can exercise. Things are pretty good now. I won't do the before and after until I've received the final acoustics, but that'll happen very soon. Now, I gotta go because I've got a lot of catching up to do 
with Monik Productions. All right, guys, we are done. We're finally done with this huge project. It took months, but we're done. The base traps and remaining panels arrived. So as you can see, we have base traps now. And we've also got two more cinema round panels. It's sounding great, it's perfect. I was expecting the base traps to have the same setup as the other panels, but no, you actually have to drill them in. Good, that's gonna look good for the video, huh? So I was looking at this manual and basically there's just a bunch of pictures that show you how it's done. You basically use a sheet of cardboard that you place against your wall and that's what you use to measure where you're gonna drill your holes and screws. I didn't quite understand some parts of the instructions so I just kind of went screw it, literally, and kind of went my way. In the end I did kind of a hybrid solution. I took lots of the guidance from the manual and then did some of my own measuring and I think it went all right. This could have gone so wrong. There's so many things that could have gone wrong, but none of those things happened. I was worried about getting the base traps aligned with the existing panels. Damn it. But I think that went all right. Another thing I was worried about was the curtain board that when I was to place the panel, am I even gonna have enough space to install it without it getting kind of jammed in that panel, but no problems there. After installing the first base trap, I knew that things were gonna be easier and the path seemed clear. Although after installing the first base trap, I actually nicked myself kind of bad. You really wanna be careful. Some of those edges are sharp and they will hurt you. Uh, I went to look for a Band-Aid and all that we had was just a bunch of these like My Little Pony cheap band-aids that didn't do anything. So I just workshopped my own, got a bunch of paper wrapped around the thumb and taped it, and that was that. So then the process started going pretty quickly. The process is pretty easy. All you do is you mark the parts where you're gonna drill. You drill in these brackets, and then you place the panels one by one. When installing one of the last base traps, I nicked myself again. I, I should have had some kind of working gloves, and I went to look for working gloves, but we've just moved, so it's just a mess. Couldn't find any, so I found winter gloves. Worked just fine. Eventually I got it done. I was so happy seeing the final result. It looks amazing in here. My goodness. After installing the base straps, I installed the remaining panels, and again I had trouble with the glue. I knew this was gonna happen. Man, I suck at this. Well, that's all right. But it's all good. It's all done. And boy, is it rewarding to get such a big project done. All right, so lastly, here is a before and after shot of what this place sounded like before acoustic panels and how it sounds like now. So I've set up this angle on purpose so it kind of matches the previous one so we can get a cool looking shot. So here we go. Bow. Bow. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks to Vicoustic for making this happen. It's wonderful. I've never had a studio this nice looking before. It's fantastic. Thank you. And if you enjoy content like this, you can subscribe to the channel. You can click on the bell thing to get notified when videos come out. And this is important. Videos are coming out every Saturday, 8 p.m. Finish time. Video's there. Finger was in the way. Just picking my nose.